is the phosphocreatine system actually anaerobic or is it part of the aerobic pathway? Uh, this is the question I'm going to tackle in this video. I'm going to try to give you a really clear illustration of how phosphocreatine and mitochondrial ATP interact inside the cell, inside the muscle cell when we talk about exercise. This is something that I first was confronted to when I listened to uh, the Empirical Cycling Podcast by Coley Moore. I highly recommend you go subscribe to his podcast. I recently interviewed him on my podcast, so please go check that out as well if you want to nerd out on some bioenergetics. But I found an analogy. I've been trying to think of something for a long time to try and explain how those two things interact. And I think that uh, we need to update our thinking when it comes to energy systems, especially in regards to what I'm going to share uh, today. And to, to kind of give you the, the calls notes, it has to do with what's called the uh, the, the, the phosphocreatine shuttle. Uh, and this is what I'm going to try and explain uh, in this video. So here's what you're going to imagine in order to understand how all of this works. You have a bathtub, okay? You have a bathtub that is full. And what's the, the water in the bathtub is the phosphocreatine that is in your muscle cell at rest. So right now you're at rest, you're not exercising, and uh, let's make it simple. Let's just say that the, 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 the bath is plugged, okay? So there's no water going out, and the uh, drain is actually where the phosphocreatine is going to go to fuel muscle contractions. So obviously phosphocreatine is gonna be the intermediate step in order to resynthesize ATP, okay? Your, uh, your muscle fibers, get activated in the following way you have uh, an impulse an impulse from your brain or from your central nervous system down the or in the, from the neuron down the axon you're going to have an actual potential action potential going down then you're going to have a depolarization of the cell membrane you're going to have calcium that is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and that uh, calcium is going to allow troponin to move, actin and myosin to bind and do the muscle contraction. And then we're going to need ATP uh, or the energy that's between the bonds of the phosphate, uh, high energy phosphate groups inside the ATP to relax the muscle contraction. Uh, and that cycle just keeps going over and over and over and over. So we need ATP in order for the muscle to relax and be in a state that can contract again. That is essentially what is going on. So ATP is what fuels the uh, letting go of the myosin and actin. And in order to put that ATP back together, because obviously it gets broken down into ADP, uh, in order to put that ADP back as ATP, we use phosphocreatine. This is kind of the temporal energetic buffer inside the body, inside the muscle cell. And so we have the bathtub full of water because we're at rest, we're not contracting our muscles yet. Uh, again, the drain is where the phosphocreatine is going to go to resynthesize ATP, to fuel muscle contractions. And then the tap is the ATP that is uh, coming from the mitochondria, so the aerobic uh, pathway. Uh, and right now the tap is closed and the bathtub is full. So if you look kind of a cross section of the of the tub, uh, we're going to see that the, the the line of water is pretty high. OK, it's not overflowing. It's just high uh, and it's stable because we're at rest. So what happens when you start exercising? We're going to take two cases. OK, one, we're going to start at a low intensity uh, pace and uh, later we'll start at a high intensity pace pace uh, and that you can you can imagine this as the size of the drain so if you start a low intensity effort you take the plug out but the drain stays small uh, later on when we'll do the high intensity effort you take the plug out but the drain kind of grows in size simply because the rate of utilization of ATP is much higher. So the rate of resynthesis through phosphocreatine is going to need to be much higher. Okay. Uh, so, so far, I hope you're following me. The bathtub is full. Uh, we started a low intensity effort. We unplug the drain. So water starts flowing down. Uh, phosphocreatine starts to be utilized to resynthesize the uh, ATP that was used for the muscle contractions. So the level in the bathtub is going to slowly go down. And what happens when the when the water goes down? Well, the tap is getting turned on. Uh, why? Because aerobic uh, respiration is going to activate 
because of what's going on downstream because of the ATP being used. So the, the cell is, oh, the cell, the different elements inside the cell are always kind of calibrating based on different factors. The main one being ATP levels. You have ATP and you have ADP. We have a lot of ATP at rest. We have very little ADP. Uh, and as you start using a lot of ATP, well, the mitochondria is gonna see that is going to say whoa okay we're we're dro the, the level's dropping we need to turn the tap on and we need to produce more atp through the uh, krebs cycle and through the electron transport system and what's interesting and I, I figured that out quite recently is that where phosphocreatine gets put back together is actually inside the mitochondrial uh, in the in the intermembrane space of the mitochondria Okay, uh, this is where the protons are being pumped from the electron transport chain. Um, and it turns out that diffusing the ATP from inside the mitochondrial matrix all the way to the myofibrils, to the contractile elements of the muscle cell, there's too much distance between the two and it's not an efficient process. So the body developed or the cells or evolution developed this way of uh, using the phosphocreatine shuttle in order to do that better. So what happens is ATP gets created or gets resynthesized, sorry, uh, at complex five, the ATPase of the electron transport system. ATP is now inside the mitochondrial matrix. It gets pushed into the mitochondrial intermembrane space. And this is where phosphocreatine gets put back together. We got creatine, we got phosphate, uh, inorganic phosphate. Those two go together. Boom, we have phosphocreatine again. And now that phosphocreatine gets shuttled outside of the mitochondria into the cytosol and towards the myofibrils where the contractile uh, process is going on inside the muscle cell. And then the phosphocreatine, like we said before, is going to put ADP or AMP back into ATP to continue that uh, cycle of muscle contraction. So back to our bathtub analogy, low intensity effort, plug gets taken out, water starts draining out, phosphocreatine starts to get used uh, to put ATP back together, but the water level goes down slowly. And now the tap gets turned on and it gets turned on proportionally to how fast the water is draining, right? Or, or how little water is left in the bathtub. So obviously if the drain is small, low intensity effort, and the level of water in the bathtub goes down slowly, the tap is turned on just a little bit, just enough to kind of maintain that uh, oxygen or that phosphor or the water level inside the bathtub. I hope you're following me so far. And what I've understood recently is that we always talked about phosphocreatine being an anaerobic process and only contributing to muscle contractions within the first 10 seconds of effort. And then we have no more phosphocreatine and we kind of switch to the other systems. But in reality, the, the ATP that is produced by the mitochondria always has to go through the phosphocreatine uh, kind of pathway in order to fuel muscle contractions. There's no direct link between the ATP from the mitochondria to the myofibrils, to the contractile elements of the cell. So when we see that phosphocreatine concentration goes down inside the cell at the onset of exercise, it doesn't mean that it's not used anymore after a few seconds. It's simply that the concentration is lower, but the flux stays uh, the way that it is, obviously proportional to the intensity of effort and to the contractions that are going on. So as we said before, for a low intensity effort, the drain is small, the phosphocreatine gets drained through and the flux uh, of or the rate of utilization of phosphocreatine is pretty low compared to high intensity effort and the tap gets turned on just enough in order to keep the water level stable or maybe even let that water level creep back up again. Uh, but again, that's in the context of a low intensity effort. So now let's switch to a high intensity effort. So you're at rest. Let's take our bathtub again. It's full. Uh, the plug, the, the drain is plugged and the tap is off you start a sprint, you start an all out effort on the bike. What's gonna happen? We pull the plug, the drain becomes big uh, because we need a lot of phosphocreatine because ATP is being used at a very, very high rate. Uh, and so the, the water starts dropping very, very fast. And within 10 seconds, there's only that much water left in the bathtub, right? Um, so if we look at the concentration in the cell, phosphocreatine level is very low. But what happens with the tap, ATP, being produced by the mitochondria, the mitochondria is going to respond by opening the tap 
all the way, both sides. And so the water, the ATP flowing from uh, the mitochondria that's putting phosphocreatine back together, that's trying to prop up the water level inside the bathtub, uh, is, 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 is significant, is tremendous. Uh, at the same time, obviously, the drain stays big because the intensity of effort is high. So phosphocreatine is being used at a very high rate. So if we look at the bathtub, there's only this much water left in the bathtub, but there's a the flux of phosphocreatine is still very high because the tub is fully, is, is the, the drain, sorry, is very big and the tap is open all the way. See, see what I mean? So even though we look at the phosphocreatine levels inside the cell after 10 seconds of all out effort, and we say, okay, there's no more phosphocreatine, so we can't use that phosphocreatine anymore. No, there's a difference between the concentration that we see at a moment in time and the rate of utilization and the flux of that element. And again, just because phosphocreatine concentration is low doesn't mean that it's not being recycled really, really fast by the uh, mitochondrial ATP inside the intermembrane space of the mitochondria and then being shuttled out towards the myofibrils, towards the contractile elements of the cell. Uh, so one doesn't work without the other. Phosphocreatine, obviously in the first 10 seconds of effort on an all-out effort like I just outlined here, sure, it's an anaerobic process because we have that reserve, we have that water in the bathtub that we can use up. But once it's used up, you cannot put phosphocreatine back together without oxygen, without the mitochondria, without the ATP from the electron transport system. So if we look in isolation, we could say that phosphocreatine system is an anaerobic process. However, in reality, if we look at it integrated within the muscle cell itself and how it functions with the other elements, we have to consider phosphocreatine as one of the steps uh, of the aerobic process, aerobic process that recycles ATP inside of mitochondria, that then puts phosphocreatine back together, that then the shuttle passes the phosphocreatine from inside the mitochondria to the cytosol, to the myofibrils, in order to put ATP back together and fuel muscle contractions. So here we have it. I hope you kind of see this in your mind's eye. Um, it would have been easier with some illustrations. They will come. They're in the pipeline. I'm working on them. But I thought I would already share that thought. And again, if you want to dig into those topics, I highly recommend the Empirical Cycling Podcast. I highly recommend the podcast I did with Coley uh, a few weeks weeks ago. If you have any questions, any follow-ups, anything you want me to tackle when it comes to bioenergetics, please leave it in the comments below. I look forward to answering them and I'll see you in the next video.